You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody, that music means it's time once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program where we break down everything here in the world of crypto, the derivatives, the options, the futures, the volatility, the volume, all that good stuff. Of course, get into the spot as well. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from this fine network. If you're liking what you're hearing, A, make sure you subscribe to the full network, not just to crypto, even though we welcome you folks who, who come in through the crypto entry point and, of course, keep those questions coming. We do love to hear from you guys. Going to do a little bit something different this week. Going to mix it up. Got to have a little bit of a quick hit. So you may have noticed we're recording this outside of our usual recording time. we got some other stuff going on here today that's forcing us to rejigger things a little bit here. So I'm going to give you the quick hit, just the facts version this week. We'll be back next week with the full kit and caboodle, crypto hot seat, all that fun stuff. So without further ado, let's dive right on into it with the Bitcoin Breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down what's going on in the world's leading digital asset, a.k.a. Bitcoin. Coming into showtime, that kind of lingering malaise, at least from a price action perspective, is over. So far this week, we saw Bitcoin rallying ever so slightly over the course of the holiday weekend. Coming into the show today, Bitcoin is up about 173 handles from where it was this time last show. Coming in right around 93, a little bit north of 93 and a quarter out there. So still not breaking that 10,000 handle to the upside, but also not languishing below 9,000 out there either. Moving on onto the vol space, of course, all these vol metrics and a lot of this other data coming to you courtesy of our friends over there in Skewland, Skew.com. Check them out for yourselves out there. 30-day realized, which is the actual amount of volatility we've seen exhibited in the marketplace over the last month, listeners, is down markedly from last show. Last show was hovering around 52%. This week, 35%. Some of that probably factoring in the quiet period leading into and coming out of the holiday, of course, but still, that's down quite a bit. So Bitcoin, which is known for its active high level of volatility petering out a little bit over the last week a one year realized vol that's not going to move as much obviously because that's a much larger frame of reference listeners that's down about a point so that's down from 85 percent to 84 moving on to the implied volatility which is the level of volatility that the options that are actually out there trading on places like Deribit and cme what level of vol they're actually pricing in listeners and that's down a little bit as well, but ever so slightly. It's down from 53% last week. It is 52% this week. So effectively unched. Bitcoin kind of taking the week off from a vol perspective out there. Volume, kind of a similar story. A bit of a light week. Let's go out to the leading platform first, which is Deribit. And not a lot going on. 
The high in terms of notional volume for the week was on the 3rd. So heading into the holiday here in the U.S. with about $98 million worth of notional, uh, you'll know that's well off the levels, well north of $150 million we were talking about not too long ago, back on June 26th on the previous show. So off the highs, kind of a middling week overall from a volume and from a volatility perspective out there this week as well. The big trades, quote-unquote, that were lighting it up, the 500 lots we were seeing going up on Darabit. Looks like they were in the 10,500 calls. All this on July 6th, by the way. And the 800 puts, excuse me, 8,000 puts. All getting pretty popular. The two big 500 lots with some other 300 and 200 lots. Looks like at least 1,000 in these couple of prints up here. The calls going up for 0.0035 and 0.0047 Bitcoin. And that was when Bitcoin was right around 92.20, down to about 92.10. So in that range is when those trades went up. The puts went up when Bitcoin was at 92.10. They went up for 0.0052 Bitcoin out there. I know it's not that intuitive quoting things in fractional Bitcoin, but that's how these options are priced. So unfortunately, you'll have to do the math for yourself as we keep on rolling. Big prints today. There actually are some decent prints on Deribit, even though the volume overall isn't that strong. And of course, because I was talking about the six being the big prints, that's of course today. So the big prints out there, of course, total of nearly 1,500 today of those July 10,500 calls, as well as the July 8,000 puts doing nearly 1,000. So Clearly someone active on maybe a strangle, maybe a risk reversal. Either way, someone's pretty active on those fairly out-of-the-money strikes out there in Bitcoin on Deribit today. Moving on out to CME, a pretty light volume week. In fact, not a lot of volume to really parse out there as opposed to the previous week's CME options seemingly taking it off last week as well. Let's move on out to the skew across the board. The 25 Delta put, 25 Delta call member, 50 Delta risk reversal listeners. That's, listeners, that's how we parse this. And that's down from about 13% last week on the positive side. Still positive, but now down to about 3.2%. So a little bit of a skew shift since our last show. Call the put. Calls ticking up ever so slightly. It was 49%, so slightly in favor of the puts last week. This week, 53%, so slightly in favor of the calls out there. Open interest. Remember, it fell off a cliff. After June expiration, it still has a long way to go before it makes that back. Uh, open interest on Deribit now, still shy of that $1 billion level it was not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago. Now it's about $808 million. CME is down to about $151 million. If you look at this graph for yourselves, listeners, over there in places like Skew or maybe in our show notes, you'll see that it really just fell off a cliff a couple of weeks ago, and it's still it's active, it's high, but it's nowhere near what it was. And it's going to take a while for September to come back online and really rebuild that OI, and we're seeing uh, OKEX still at number three, 48 million, number four, Ledger X, 38 million back, still hanging out there with the same 65,000 open interest they've had pretty much since we started this show, <laughs> so it seems like anyway, hasn't really moved too much over there. In terms of where the OI is aggregated, like we said, Ledger X, excuse me, Deribit, still number one with about 77%, CME number two, 14% now, uh, OKEX number three with 5%, Ledger X, 4% backed negligible amount out there. Let's look at across the months, which strikes are and which months are really active. Let's go to the months first. And July, taking the lead right now, 45,000 contracts open. Again, that's a pale shadow of what June had just a few weeks ago, with about 114,000 contracts open. So you can see now why the OI has fallen off a cliff. SEP will eventually overtake July, just a question of when. Right now, it is not quite there yet. 24,600 is how many contracts are open in September right now. But as you said before, we've seen every pretty much cycle out here. It's the quarterlies where the action aggregates in the Bitcoin options. I'm sure SEP will rise to prominence soon, just like June did before it and March before that. Open interest on the strikes is still the 11,000 strike. That's where the action is. Nearly 14,000 contracts open there. It's pretty much number one by a wide margin. In fact, the 10,000 strike is a distant second, only 9,300 contracts open there. So for some reason, folks are already looking past the 10,000 strike all the way out to the 11,000 strike. Maybe today's action on the 10,500 strike will will juice that one up. There's only about 3,700 contracts open there. Moving on out to the future, CME land, light volume week last week as well. A lot of that probably due to the holiday. Today, about 3,800 contracts on the tape. Last week, the big day was Thursday, 7,200. Every other day was pretty much fairly Fairly light from a comparative perspective. Backed volume bot, same a story out there. Looking at the contracts going up into it, 1,246. That's down 27%. Uh, the all-time high, remember, and most active day was back on December 18th of 2019. They did 6,600 contracts. 
6601 to be precise. And they've never come close to that again. Uh, open interest is about $8.03 million. It's down 13% as well. All right, let's keep on rolling now. Let's, let's break down and explore the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the, the altcoin, altcoin universe. universe. All right, everybody, welcome to the Altcoin Universe portion of the show. We break down what's lighting up the rest of the crypto marketplace. Let's start with the top 10, see if any interesting changes are afoot out there. Number 10, Crypto.com coin. It's been number 10 for a few weeks now here with about 2.4 million. Standard disclaimer applies for all these market caps listeners. So not sure what that is. Check out previous episodes of the show. Number 9, Binance coin. A little bit, little bit north of that, 2.45 Billion for number nine. Number eight, Cardano, 2.55. Number seven, Litecoin, 2.8 billion. Number six, Bitcoin SV, 3.4 billion. Number five, Bitcoin Cash, 4.3 billion. Number four, XRP, kind of been locked there at number four for a while, down to about 8.2 billion. Number three, Tether, still firmly in number three there, 9.1 billion. Numero dos, take a guess, yep, it's ETH, 26.5 billion. That means number one. Oh, what a shocker. Bitcoin holding that top spot yet again out there with about $171.5 billion. Uh, ETH having a good week here, up about 12, over 12 and a half handles actually since our last show. Come into showtime, right? A little bit shy of the 240 level, about 239 and change out there. Let's look at the metrics out there. ETH, obviously, also the number two most active crypto options product. 30 day realized. Down quite a bit. We've seen some interesting evolutions in, in ETH vol. In fact, our friends over there in Genesis in their newsletter last week were saying it's really surprising how far ETH vol has fallen. It's cheaper than Bitcoin now, and that continues this week. 30-day realized down to 47%. That was 66% a week ago. So that's exhibiting a lot less volatility. So there's a reason why that vol is coming in. The, the product itself is not as volatile. So that's a market decrease in realized volatility out there. One year realized as you'd expect, pretty much on around 103%. Uh, the 30-day implied, which is the level of vol the markets are actually pricing, and that's ticked up, actually, ever so slightly. So realized down, implied ticking up a little bit. Kind of weird. Uh, let's see. the, But not so much. It's only up about 3%. So it was 50% last week, 53% this week. Let's keep on moving out here. Let's look out to Deribit, see what's printing in ETH options land. Kind of a quiet week, as you would expect. The average daily volume is down from about 11 million last show to about 8.8 million now. The biggest spike we saw was back on the 26th with 21 million. Nothing close to that here this week. We're shy of 10 million pretty much the entire week out there. OI, worth noting though, it is ticking back up after the big drop off from June. We're still not back to those levels, of course, but it was 119 million open last week, this week, 131 million. So a little bit of a bright spot on ETH options ticking up from an OI perspective. Let's move on out to the other big altcoin ripple. Another week, another kind of, I guess, disappointment for the XRP folks, even though it is up. It's up about a cent from last show. So I suppose those of you who were really worried when it was languishing in the 17 cent range, are we going to start drifting back down to the mid teens? Not so much this week. Up to about 18 and three quarters cents out there. So maybe threatening the 19 cent handle. Maybe that's a good sign. Maybe it'll break the the 20 cent handle again. So those of you who've been hoping for a bit of a warm turning out there in XRP land out there, a little bit of a lift this week. Bitcoin Cash up nearly 18 handles, 1798 from last show. And Bitcoin SV, the point. Change leader on the week here, up nearly 37 handles from last show, 3682. That's going to do it for the Altcoin Universe. It's also going to do it for this abbreviated crypto quick hit this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't worry, we'll be back again next week at our usual recording time, bringing the full kit and caboodle, crypto hot seat, all that fun stuff. In the meantime, make sure, A, keep those questions coming. B, make sure if you haven't done so, subscribe to our full network. C, leave a review if you like what you hear. And D, most importantly, Stay safe out there, and we'll see you next time on the Crypto Rundown. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 